is a plaintiff, Darcy Leonard. She says the defendant violated her rights of entry when she showed up to inspect her apartment without proper notice while she was indecently dressed. She had to hold her breasts with her hands because she was wearing her flimsy pajamas. She wasn't given the required 24-hour notice, and she's suing the defendant for the $2,000 she now feels she's owed. This is the defendant, Catherine Duvon. She says she was notified by Building and Safety they wanted to do an impromptu inspection on a property she owns. And the inspector was standing in front of the plaintiff's apartment on a public walkway. The plaintiff became very upset, but that space doesn't belong to the plaintiff. She doesn't understand how this could possibly constitute a $2,000 lawsuit. But hey, this is America. She's accused of trespassing. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant violated her rights as a tenant by entering the property without her permission. But the defendant says the city wanted in and the plaintiff had no right to say no. It's the case of enter at your own peril. Thank you, Douglas. Darcy in. Leonard? Yes. You are suing Frolic House LLC, Sky Chamberlain, represented here by Catherine Duvon. You are a co- Ma'am. Ma'am, hi. Hi. I'm talking. I don't know why you're staring her down. You are a co-owner? Yes. Okay. Who, who owns it with you? My adult son, Sky Chamberlain. Got it. Um, for $2,000 for abuse of right of reentry. Okay. Talk to me. Hello. Um, yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I am here because um, on December 6th, um, the landlord um, abused the right of reentry without written notice and non-emergency reasons. Um, when um, I woke up uh, to a text at 11.47 that had been written at 8 a.m. that said that they needed access to the property between 11.30 and 1.30 from uh, Sky Chamberlain. I asked if it was an emergency and I was given no answer. Um, I negotiated giving courtesy of access at 12.30 as I saw- What, do you, what, do you call, what did they need to do? Go into uh, the apartment? They uh, said that they need- This is an apartment building, right? It's, uh, it, is, it was an apartment building, but it has since been changed to a one-family house, um, which is um, grounds for eviction. So this is part of a pattern of getting us Wait, evicted. Wait, what's going on? What is this place? Is it an apartment building or is it a house? What is it? Um, well, that's what Building and Safety wanted to determine. They had a permitting question, so they wanted to come out and make the determination if it was a single family residence. That's all the history of the permits show. So that's why there was an inspector there? Building and Safety wanted to come see the property. So what's the, when you say abuse the right of reentry, you, you, California has a law that says that landlords can't um, abuse the right to reenter the property. What is it you're saying that landlord, Sky, did? to abuse the right. Besides, text you at 8, you woke up at noon, and then you said to him, um, "No." What, did, what was your text to him? Well, we negotiated that they would come in at 12.30. Um, I was in my pajamas, and I was requesting 40 additional minutes before them to come in so that I wouldn't have to be seen in my, my thin white... How long does it take you to change? Well, I just, I just didn't want... I woke up and immediately... Like, this is about the fourth time... Why were you time. waking up at noon? I, I work nights. Okay. Yeah, I work nights, so okay. I sleep in. What do you do? Um, I'm a tarot and palm reader, so I work at uh, bars and, and okay. nightlife events. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So the uh, agreed till 12.30. We, we're, right, right. we're going I got back. It. We both agreed 12.30. That's yeah. when it's going to be. At 11.50, um, I got uh, a text, like, as I heard the gate on my, uh, my, my porch open, and the inspector and all three of them came on the porch inside of the gate of my apartment. They, um, okay, I, I need pictures so I can understand. When you say they're on your porch... And uh, you hear the gate open, because this is the only picture I have. So okay. the black gate there is my gate, and the second blue door with the red arrow there, that's, that's my door. Okay, so you heard so, this gate open. I heard the gate open. As they were coming in, I got a text from Sky saying, we're going to just bring the, the, no asking, we're just going to bring the inspector onto the porch. So we're just going to start the inspection on the porch, even though you already said you 
We're going to do it at 12:30. We're going to well, do it now. Why don't you stay inside and not come out? What like what's the big deal? That's what I'm um, trying to figure out. What is the big deal if people are on that porch? Like why don't you you know you say in your in your complaint, I was in a thin T-shirt and you know and I felt vulnerable. Well, just don't come out. You're the one who came out in your thin T-shirt. Why didn't you just let them start on? I'm just I guess I'm right. trying to figure out how this amounts to a two thousand dollar bonanza because sure. I don't think that's what we're really here about. What we're okay. really here about is you like living there. You've lived there how long? Um, I've lived there for over a year. I don't like living there anymore because oh, so of, you, because you know of you're the, out, right? You know you're not going to get to stay the there. The treatment that I've, I've I have no right. Peace so when's of your lease over? I have no. When's your lease over? Uh, they never gave me a new. Oh, lease so you don't when even have a lease. Over. So why don't you give her a notice of eviction since it's so unpleasant? Um, I just want to stay on point with this. Uh, it wasn't our intention. You're being sued and dragged into court because she doesn't like that your son walked on the porch. Actually, she he is, did, actually, he didn't walk on the porch. The inspector did. Yeah, and... But um, he opened the, the gate for the inspector to no, do No, the gate no. pushed the gate open. We were okay. behind him. Oh, so there's no lock on the gate? Nope. Okay, and, so, so let me just... I guess I'm just asking you, um, what's your game plan here? Because she wants you to pay her $2,000 well, over that transgression. What is you and your son's plan on, on what you're going to do with the tenants and stuff? So we, well, this was my last big kick at the parenting can, helping my son buy a building in Hollywood where he eventually was going to live and have tenants. And it's turned into a very sticky wicket. But it so. doesn't have to be. I mean, this is a sticky wicket right here. Well, we're trying but to. But there's, there's something called a notice of eviction. You see, here's the thing. There's a law in California that says that when a, a landlord may not abuse the right of access and use it to use it to harass a tenant. That's a pretty big standard. All right. And if the landlord commits a significant and intentional violation. All right. There is a civil penalty not to exceed two thousand dollars. This is what she is suing you for. OK, that's what's happening. You think it's going to end here? It's going to be. What is it they're doing this day when, when you, there's no lock on that gate, right? Is she right about that? She's lying about everybody was inside the gate. Her, is, Sky, is there a and lock the on the gate? There's yes. not a lock on the okay. gate. So what happens when they go on the porch? When they came on the porch, um, I had panicked. Uh, I felt um, uh, intruded upon. Uh, I went to the front door. I opened the door and I said, uh, please go. Okay, so you opened the door in your flimsy pajamas and yep. had them see you. Yes. By your own volition, because they didn't go into yeah, your apartment. I was, I was you could have avoided being seen in flimsy pajamas if you'd stayed inside. Right, but I felt that when they came in the gate, they were coming into my apartment. Well, nobody came into your apartment, right? No, because... Uh, no, you, you're the one who opened the door opened, and went outside to yell well, at them. But All right, I, so I, you tell but, me but your we, version of what happened when um, the inspector wanted to look at the porch. According to you, what? Well... So we were told that Building and Safety wanted to show up between 11.30 and 1.30, and we got to the building at 11.30, and Darcy responded to my son's 8 a.m. text at um, 10 to noon, saying 12.30, which sounded like a plan with us. We really didn't know what the inspector wanted. Um, but with these inspectors, he showed up at noon, and I said 12.30, and he's like, I'm not waiting until 12.30. Yeah. So at that point, my son, and I have the text here, wrote, Oh, We're look just at that. She blew up the text. Come here, honey. This is what we call, I mean, I'm sorry. Stay where you are. Hand that to my bailiff. I'm sorry. That was my fault because I told sorry. you to come. So but I this is what we call judge-friendly font. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's so funny. So my son, at that point, when the, it became clear the inspector wasn't going to wait around, said, we're just going to show him the po porch. And then Darcy responded, thank you. Okay. So somewhere between no. that no. and walking into the porch, I guess Darcy had written no. Yeah. Um, can I, do you have it in your phone? Yes. Yeah, okay, because I can see the times if it's in the phone. Great. Thank you. Not so judge friendly. Not so judge friendly. <laughs> okay. I am not ready to have visitors. I need to get dressed. This is the second time in two weeks I have woken to an immediate demand. I'm not sure I'd call that a demand. I have the right to say who comes in and when unless it's an emergency. It alarms me that if I hadn't seen this, it might seem 
like you might have just come in while I was still sleeping. That is not acceptable. I can make myself ready to receive the inspector at 1230 as a courtesy to you. You're welcome. Okay. He answers, there was never a plan to enter unannounced or without permission. And then he says, we're just going to show the inspector the porch now. She says, thank you. And then she says, no. Okay. So here's what we've got. We've got, um, we're just going to show him the porch. And then you're showing him the porch. And then the only reason anybody sees you in your 90s is you barge out because you're mad. What are you really mad at, though? Well, did they walk into your apartment ever? They, they've come into my apartment many times. They've, they've, oh, every time they've requested access, it has been with no advance notice. Right, and but it's hold on one second. Have they like, ever walked into your apartment without you knowing? Um, I believe that she did once. How do you know? Uh, I, was, I was in there. What do, why do you say you believe, then, if you um, were there? Honestly, there are so many incidents that I just No, can't. I'm asking about something very specific. Know, Did I anybody can't. ever barge into your apartment no. unannounced? So if the no. answer to that is no. There's no barging. What we're talking about is people trying to gain access by texting you. Well, sometimes it was knocking on my door, though. Like, it, often it was either knocking on my door or getting a text that's like, we need access now. You know, and I was afraid that if I didn't comply, that I would get evicted, which is what is happening. I'm no, getting, I think suing them for two thousand dollars is going to get you evicted. I, I already have um, an Good. eviction because a housing department. Because uh, they say it's a single family. They say it's a single. So family. you had to already evict all the tenants. They haven't served us anything yet. Well, then how do you have an eviction? Because housing called and said that we're getting relocation money and that they well, need to work it out. You're getting relocation money. How much money are you getting? Um, I'm not sure. I think it might be uh, 10000 You're getting $10,000 to relocate? Only in California. <laughs> Doesn't everybody just want to move to California right now? You're getting ten grand to relocate of taxpayer money. On what theory? You don't even have a lease. You're on a month-to-month. -month. It's I, not taxpayer money. Oh, what is it? It's our money. How come? That's the Well, I actually feel better about that. All right, so do you have a lawyer? No. We're new at... Owning a building. You're new. Go at, to consult a lawyer. That's when people yeah. consult a lawyer. That's good advice. Right before you shell out ten grand to this one and ten. How many tenants are there? There's two tenancies. That's twenty grand. How go see a lawyer for for five hundred dollars for an hour and find out just just buy an hour of a lawyer's time and figure out what's going on. Good advice. Hey, there's just <laughs> there's there's one other picture that I brought. Yeah, and let me this see is, the picture. This is just as far as the inspector got onto the porch. Let me, let me explain something. I don't care, and I'm gonna tell you why I don't care. So if the city wants in to inspect and you rent that apartment, do you have a duty to let them in? Honestly not. It's private property and it's your right to let them not allow it in. It is the city coming at you now saying, I, I, we need in, we need to check something to see if something's legal. Mm. What are you saying? I'd still say no. I would not let them in. You wouldn't let them in? Nope, not my mm -hmm. What are you saying? If it's a rental property, it's not technically yours, so maybe yes, the city can go in. Okay, I'm getting some nods here going inside the courtroom. Walking onto the porch, to me, is not what this statute was meant to cover. It was meant to cover the kind of landlords who are creepy and disrespectful and walk, even though it's their property, they think that renters have no rights and that they go in and they, it was meant to cover something that isn't this. Putting your feet on a porch because somebody's sleeping at noon and you know the inspector's there and you're telling, okay, we'll just look at the porch, don't worry. That to me is not a violation that entitles her to two grand. So my verdict is against you and for the defendant. My business is done here now. But you guys really should speak to somebody, even if you just buy a few hours of their time, to get that's great. Advice. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. All right. But as far as this case is concerned, verdict for the defendant. So the judge says walking on a porch is not a $2,000 violation and the plaintiff has lost her case. How are you feeling right now? Um, I'm feeling like the, the judge didn't understand the full picture of what was going on. We were originally rented as rent stabilized and um, there was numerous... Um, violations this was just the most prominent one but it could be a lot worse mm -hmm. especially if you're getting ten thousand dollars to get out <laughs> right it could be worse yes, but it could. could be better <laughs> okay well good luck to you all right yeah. sorry you lost your case oh thank you you're welcome yeah you must sign a few documents okay. on your way out of the courtroom and now here comes the defendant i don't know you got some great advice from the judge what do you think 
I think it was sound advice to consult with an attorney. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Good luck. Thanks. Interesting case, Harvey. You know, when you're really unsure of your legal rights like this, I will tell you this. Um, a lot of cities, especially big cities, they have bar associations, uh, uh, associations that lawyers join. And a lot of them have what they call bar referral services, where they have referrals, where, and some of them have these low-cost consultations where you can meet with a lawyer for a low cost, sometimes even free, um, for 30 minutes. And in that period of time, you can really get some good advice on what your legal rights are, what to do, and what not to do.